This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, here we are at the end of the year, which is shocking for me to think about. Um, that it's gone so fast. I mean, you wonder where do these things go? How did this happen? And yet it does happen and it has just disappeared. And so I thought that with the 2020 coming up 2020, it would be appropriate to think about, okay, so what's your vision? Where do you want to be as an author, a successful author, where do you want your publishing to be? Where do you want your book to be? Um, where do you strategize? Are you even think of strategizing right now in the middle of all the holiday seasons and what goes on? So that's what this is all about today and what you could be thinking about of where you want to go, how you want to get there, what tools do you need to bring you into play and all that. So that makes it kind of exciting to me uh, to be able to move ahead um, in that arena. So let's just talk about getting unstuck. If you're feeling stuck at all or you're noodling where you want to go, that I created a new poster this morning for author success. And it really came from a dialogue that I had when I was doing some work. I was one of Procter & Gamble's spokesperson. And the CEO told me, he says, you know, when people always talk about thinking out of the box, you know, they just, they, they need to throw the box out, get rid of the box. So the poster I created is to, you know, stop, you know, to, to stop thinking about the box, toss the damn box away and Create a different scenario. That's where you need to be thinking, you know. So what's your vision right now? Because, you know, the vision is part of the triangle of the platform. The platform is what's your passion, what's your vision, and what's your commitment? And when you bring all those together, remember, commitment has three components. It's time, energy, and money. And yes, a lot of the things that you're going to be doing do have a financial factor to them. So what's your, what's your commitment, the time, the energy, and the money? But really, what passion? I want you to go back and regrew. What, what's your passion that brought you to this party, this thing called writing, this thing called publishing, this thing to become an author, and this thing to get a book out? What, what was that passion behind it? Does it need to be rejuvenated? Does it need a little juice to add to it? Or maybe you're tired or you need to be infused with something else. And then you want to think about, okay, so what's the big picture? Where do I want to go? Where do I see myself? Where do I see my books? What new books are going to be coming along? What could be the vision for 2020? And remember, 2020 isn't perfect vision. But it's also seeing that bigger picture. And sometimes it could be a little bit blurred in the process. So what's your vision? And then that commitment comes in. And then where do you want to go as you move forward? And it's really that's the direction that we're after um, in this scenario as we jump into this new amazing year that's about ready to unfold. So vision, it's all about vision. So starting with, you know, what is your goal? You know, what is the goal that you want to do? And is it could be a new book? Could there be something that's going to be happening in news? I mean, 2020 is going to be a political year. Is there anything that you're doing that might coattail? Or you could say what we've been talking about 
for the last few years, newsjacking. Can you coattail newsjack something that you could tweak and pull in? The only problem with that is that you could date yourself. So that's a caution, big caution. It's better to kind of have it evergreen unless you have a huge, massive audience that is waiting with bated breath for your next comment on something that would tie in politically, environmentally, anything that is hitting that area. But look at that arena as you go forward here. And then the next thing that you want to do is think, okay, so what have I written already that maybe I could manipulate that I could tweak, that I could add to, that I could pull from if we're thinking of something new? Or is it just going to come something just totally off Timbuktu and really pull it out and bring it into another arena for you? I mean, it can go in a variety of different directions, but that's the exciting stuff is that, you know, you're the creator, you're the master, you've got the paintbrush. What are you going to create with this new abstract that you're going to pull out that will move from a blur into clarity into the hands of your readers? That's where you're headed, and that's the direction that I would hope that you would go. Now, one of the strategies I think that's always important to look at, there's always trends that are coming along um, that that will, you know, changing. Certainly the independent, small press, self-published market is going to continue to grow. But that one of the things that my strategies would be that how do you become uh, known in your community? Because as a speaker, and I'm going to talk about speaking before the show's over, because that should be a critical element in your success quotient for 2020. That as a speaker, I always said, there ain't no glory in the hometown. Rarely did I speak. I'm based in Denver, Colorado. Rarely did I speak in Denver. Oh, I spoke in Nome, Alaska. Oh, I was in Duluth. I've spoken in all 50 states in 17 countries. I have been all over Timbuktu, but rarely did I really bring it up. And then I started thinking about when I was thinking about doing this final show, what could I have done differently um, that might have brought more recognition to the hometown girl that I didn't have to travel so much as an author? What can you do to bring recognition to your writing, your theories, your solutions, your discoveries, your amazing storytelling? What can you do? Well, here's big. My huge aha this past year has really been to really milk, create and milk using press releases but fine-tune them, almost customize them. So one of the things that my my staff, with my direction, really put the energy into when was to identify all the print weeklies throughout the state, all the print weeklies. I mean, if I was going to go speak to authors, which is what I do now, primarily authors and writers, but before then I was speaking to healthcare organizations all over because of my expertise in toxic workplaces in female-dominated workplaces, which many of my books have been written on. And that um, we, we, we started compiling a list. And, you know, most of it was available online, which is the cat's meow, that we could get the name of the, pub- the, the publication, the name of the publisher, the contact person, the email, the website, and the phone number. It was all right there. So we started doing a grid and did it in an Excel sheet and we got it all put together and then we started sending out, you know, every, every few weeks we would send out something that would, that would come across and be effective for us. And then what we did is that we, we just, we would follow up maybe with a variation of it. All of a sudden, we started getting attention. They would put a blurb in. You know, some of them, most of these are printed. Now, where do these things go, these things called the weeklies? They go in coffee shops. They go in bookstores. Sometimes you'll see them in grocery stores. They'll go in restaurants, especially that cater to the, the breakfast and lunch crowd. People pick them up. 
They're freebies. But what it does, they love images. They'd love to have your picture, whether you have an award, a book signing, you're an event, you've got something going on. Um, and all of a sudden, you start getting traction. So one of my goals for you is to really dig down, start with your local community, reach out to your state. Don't worry about the region. Uh, don't worry about talking about going all over Timbuktu in your adjoining states. Just concentrate. Whether you're in Nebraska, whether you're in you know Illinois, whether you're in South Carolina, I don't care where. But wherever you are, concentrate on your state. Start compiling a master list of the weeklies. Go to the Google and put in the you know what weeklies are published in New York, what weeklies are published in California. Maybe you would want to split it between in the big states, Northern California, Southern California, Central California. All right, so move around in that arena. And I'm going to guarantee after you start building this and and, and putting it together, you'll be surprised that how things will start getting picked up. Some of these groups also have, they have their online version. So you're going to get picked up here and picked up there. And I have to tell you a very fun story. One of the publishers of one of the big weeklies here in Denver came up my driveway after I had a book brunch for my new book, a launching for When God Says No. And he had got the time screwed up. We invited him. We did the press release. We invited him. And he showed up at 1.30, thinking it was from 12 to 2. And it was actually 10 to 12. That's okay. I invited it in. We had a cup of tea together. He looked at all the books. He said, I'm going to take a picture of you. Not only did he feature me in the book brunch, as well as my colleague, Mara, who we did this co-thing together. He, we were featured the first week, and he, then he picked up and says, you know what? I'm going to do this tea you did the previous week. So two weeks in a row, we were featured, and he said to me, and then he showed up at my door just the other day to give me some of the publications. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Is there a book in you? Or another? Author You shows you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being hoodwinked. If you already have a book out, you will find a supportive and brainstorming community that is connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual Author U extravaganza. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publishing. Author U is the premier authoring resource in the country, creating community, education, guidance, vision, and success for the serious author. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author U is for you. Timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted on its social media platforms, and it is free. Discover Author U, where authors go to become seriously successful. Join Author U today at AuthorU.org. Are you confused about publishing options? Do you know which printing option is best for your book? Does your stomach flip when you think about selling books? Or do you feel overwhelmed with what to do about book marketing and publicity? Get the answers and much more. Get them and from someone who knows publishing inside and out from both the traditional and independent sides how to make a successful book. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand and platform, and is a success, a bestseller. It is your choice. You choose. If you want author and publishing success, 
you want Judith Bryles as your book coach. Sign up for her weekly blogs and easing at thebookshepherd.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, I got so excited telling you all about, you know, what we've been doing and setting up and the publisher coming up to my door. I missed my cue. So let me finish the rest of the story. So he he uh, said, I want to I really want to get everyone to know you in this area. And I thought, how cool is that? You have a publisher of a major weekly who just wants to feature. And then here's the icing on the cake. And he says, you know, Judith. Why don't you write a regular column for our weekly? Ta-da. All right. So it, it that doesn't happen overnight. You have to have, number one, the two Ps, persistence. Persistence. We kept, we, we created these press releases, and I'll give you some ideas. We would send those out. And then that is, you've got to have it, it just, it, persistence, perseverance, and patience. Maybe three Ps, all right? So you got to persevere, you got to have persistence, and you got to have patience. It's not going to happen overnight. So on these little press releases, they were never more than a page. I always had some kind of an image. We attached a picture. And remember, when you send out a press release, you don't send it as attachment. You copy it into your email on that. And, and, and I have to, um, very cool. I had a uh, radio, sh- uh, podcast radio show, um, with Wayne Kelly, uh, two weeks ago on the air. And I would encourage you to do it because it was, this show was about why authors hate, why, why radio shows hate authors and how you can change it. And um, and one of the tips he said, that he says, the number one way to get me to open an email if someone is trying to pitch themselves is you just put in Wayne interview. He says, I have to open it. I have to, I have to check it out. I've got to figure out what interview. Um, and then you have it put together. So I thought that was a very fun uh, reveal on his part. But with that, that you, you take that, it could be maybe you're being featured on a show. Maybe you've been featured on several podcasts or a TV spot or, or a radio show or film about. And it could be local author featured on multiple media platforms or, or multiple television shows. And then you, you know, do the reveal, give it a little tidbit and an aha. Uh, to come along. The other thing is that if you've won any book awards, several were announced. This is kind of the end of the season. The new season opens up. So you should be aware of book awards, um, that are out there. And book awards would be one of my tips that you will, uh, uh really sign up for. But here's what you would do is that you would, uh, if you're, if you have a signing coming up at a bookstore, have a sex, do a press release. Do a press release um, or a, a private event. Maybe it's a celebration. It, maybe it's about a launching. Um, anything that you could tie in with your expertise uh, or you're directly with your book. So you could keep doing it out and get on a regular system. So the two big freebies, you know, and if you want to have this as a national list with a PR to see if you can snag something else, you know, PR.com and PRlog.com um, are the, the two freebies that seem to work. Otherwise, that you, I mean, I have a, a system I've paid for for a long time. Um, that we go into, but that that's something that we do want to look at um, as as you to really cement who you are, uh, to, that you're part of the community. So this is what this is about. And then I know that there's a lot of if you have a main print publication, for example, in your city, Determine if they've got, they're going to have an online and sometimes they have inserts that they focus on local areas you want to reach out to those um, as well 
so and and, and submit and, and for example in Denver we have the Denver Post and they have something called Your Hub and Your Hub is their online local community that really reaches out like the weeklies to all the areas and we can we submit to them too and often not only has it been picked up on the online it gets picked up in the print as well so that's very exciting and because we've been building this has been we have been aggressively building since uh summertime really put this into play is that when we had our annual author's tea, which I do every fall and was really late fall this year, it actually popped up in one of the big weeklies as one of the top five things to go to uh, if uh, that were free in the Denver community. We had 150 people show up. I had to bake more brownies, but we had a lot of people show up. I had some authors that sold 30 and 40 books each. How exciting is that? How often do you do that at an event? So weeklies, put that on your list. Second on your list is if you haven't made an audiobook for success for 2020, I want you to move that to the top of your list. Not too long ago, I did a webinar um, and you can you can, probably can find it archived on the bookshepherd.com under resources. And it's about create, how to create your own audiobook. I mean, you could spend thousands of dollars, by the way, doing this, but you can also do it for a few hundred bucks. And this is one way that you can do it yourself. It tells you what equipment and, and we're not talking about, you know, uh, spending a fortune audiobooks are the fastest growing segment of the publishing industry. This is a go, 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 go. So with audiobooks that you want to make sure that you're going to, you know, post it, get it up. So it shows on your uh, book page on Amazon. So you'll have your print book, your ebook and your audiobook. So people choice. Now think of a menu. Even when you go into just a hamburger joint, they have 20 different plus hamburgers to choose from, different variables, different toppings. So your book is the main course, and then it has the topping. Do you want it in an audio format? Do you want to read it on an e-reader? Or do you want it the print version, right? So think of it this way, and that when you create an audio book, uh, and as I said, that if you go to the book shepherd dot com, you will find that under the resources, there is the variation that you can actually in a DIY version of it. And so you want to make sure that you, you know, listen into it. This is a good time. You know, this last week of the year, this is a good time to do kind of a catch up with resources and, and see if this makes sense for you to do. And, and pick it up. For under $300, you can have the whole shebang. You get the webinars. You get the consulting. You get all kinds of stuff in to help you along the way. Or you can spend, and I will tell you, I've spent mm, probably $1,800 for some of my audiobooks where I've had a, a you know consultant in there. I've got the editors in there. And this is going to show you how to do this, some of this editing on your own. Now, you need to practice. And when you do an audiobook, you need to understand this is not reading. This is not picking up your book and reading like you're reading, like you're reading, monotone, boring, boring, boring. That you've got to pause. You've got to have energy into it. If, if you've got action, there might be a gasp. You know, be willing to change your voice a little bit so you have that narration going along so you engage the reader and you bring them in. So important. Monotone is out. You know, uh, uh, this is not when you need a steady, 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 steady type voice because that's where it gets boring. You need to have variation in it. Like when you talk with someone else. So there's energy, there's enthusiasm, there's surprise, there's, oh my God. All that will come out for the reflection for your tone. And I remember one time when I was in the studio, the editor, he could tell, he said, I can hear you smile through your voice as you read that. All right. That's what you want. All right. So audiobooks should definitely be on your radar if you haven't already done them. 
you don't do an audio. Don't start with audiobooks. Please don't do that. You start after your book is confirmed and printed and done, 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 done. Because you want to make sure. Then you go to your ebook. The stages is print book, ebook, audiobook. You want to make sure that, that then you've got all the, you know, the hiccups taken care of. Your ebook needs to be at least 2% within the, uh, uh, ebook side. The audiobook needs to be 2% within so there's, they can sync. Uh, Amazon has something called the Whisper Sync. And with the Whisper Sync, what you can do is that if someone's listening to an ebook, uh, and they turn it off and let's say they now turn on their in the car and they put on the audiobook it automatically fast forwards to where you closed off the ebook when you turn off the audiobook or you're you know you've got buds on and you're running or you're walking or you're filling in the blank that when you turn that off and you open up the ebook it automatically goes to the spot where you dropped off so that's why you want to always do the audiobook last very important. So audiobooks are a plus uh and and they're way fun. And here's what's cool. Let's go back to doing press releases. When you have your new book, you launch it. If your ebook comes at the same time, you could say it's available or when you have the ebook come out, you can so press release you're launching that that it joins its, you know, the print book. When you have an audiobook, you can announce that launching and now it's available in print, ebook and launching format. So it just makes you look like I want you to understand that this is a business. This is a business. I want you to treat it that each one is a separate product. You are the CMO, the chief marketing officer, and it's your responsibility. It's your job, your function, your privilege to support what you've created to get out because you never know. You never know what your words could do to change someone's life. This is Author You. It's your guide to book publishing, and I'm Judith Bryles. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Discover the power of you and your book at the Judith Bryles Unplugged events. Each summer, Judith Bryles Book Marketing Unplugged unfolds over three intensive days working with just Judith. You get publishing strategies, author and book platforms, book marketing panache and pizzazz, and authoring tools to take you and your book to rock star success. In the fall and winter, Judith Bryles Speaking Unplugged includes Judith as your coach and mentor during two powerful days. You will learn how to structure a speech, how to create openings and closings, how to find gigs that pay you and sell your books, and you will get one-on-one coaching. Go to thebookshepherd.com and click on the events tab to learn how to participate at the next Unplugged Workshop event. First impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an e-book, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop, sizzle, and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience. And your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand. Nick Selinger of NZ Graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts. With over 20 years of experience in graphic design, he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need, such as posters, banners, postcards, one-sheets, business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's nzgraphics.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. 
everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Welcome back. My next tip for you to visualize uh, to carry the 2020 concept is really take advantage of some of these book awards that are out there. Now, I have done a lot of blogs. Again, I'll refer you back to uh, the Book Shepherd website. Um, and if you just scroll down to the very bottom, put in search book awards every year, I usually do an update on, on who kind of who's who out there for the small press, the independent press. Um, and, and, and take advantage of this, uh, that if you can nail down, I, and, and you have to go on each one of the websites to see if submissions are still open. But for example, Forward magazines, they have the Indie Fabs. Forward is, uh, almost tied to the hip of, um, the libraries. Very, a huge reputation. Anyone that they promote, they cover, they do a review in their magazine, they, uh, the libraries pay attention. Uh, it being involved in the Indie Book Awards is always a plus. Uh, and they have something called the Best Book Awards that get announced at the uh, Library Association. This is always a plus to have. And by the way, that's a, uh, th- those kind of things are uh, uh, press releases. Now, if you've entered several, I would kind of wait on an accumulation. If you get a big one, that's big, but accumulation. And and I know that I got picked up in print when I put local author wins eight uh, national book awards. So you have that. I mean, they like those kind of shout outs. And this is where you, that if you've been listening to this show, it's hard to believe we've done this, you know, over 300 shows now. But that when we have these, that that you really start building your credibility and your shout outs this way. And it does pick up. So book awards. So check them out. Go down to the website, go to the bookshepherd.com, scroll down, put in book awards, see the ones I'll mention like best book awards, international book awards, the Ippy awards, the Ben Franklin awards. There's dragonfly. There's parents choice awards. If you have any book on parenting, on relationships, on families, parents choice are kind of like a gold standard out there. Uh, and, and just look around that there, each one of the states, by the way, Congress years and years and years ago authorized the Center for the Books um, that they could do. Now, some are, you know, the Chamber of Commerce could have picked it up. Who knows? But some have really valid, strong literacy programs for the chambers and not for the chambers, but for for book book awards is just part of it. But they do all kinds of literacy related programs. And if you've got a state like the Colorado Center for the Book, uh, there could be the Illinois Center for the Book. I, who knows what they're going to call it? But they were authorized by Congress. And a lot of times they will have an advocacy program plus a book awards that would be worthwhile probably entering. So go after that and check that out. Um, Highly recommended. Next on my to-do list uh, for you to really is I want you to go back to your your book itself. Look over your book, your wise words. Now, it could be, and and you know what, I don't care if it's uh, fiction or nonfiction. You have wonderful lines, maybe wonderful phrases. Maybe it's part of a longer sentence. I don't know. But start making posters. Canva will be your best friend. There's a free and a for fee version. The free is just fine here. That start pulling these out and do whatever the phrase is and then put your name underneath it and then embed Canva will show you how to do the embedding but embed your website and pro- of course put a copyright copyright 219 your website that's that kind of thing 
and start making posters. Now, it, when you discover free sites like pixabay.com, unsplash.com, uh, the morgue file.com. I want you to start accumulating images that then you will make a special folder in your picture file on your computer that you can just pull from any time to really incorporate the image that might, you know, support it, enhance. Uh, whatever you're doing. Sometimes just going with a plain Jane, just the phrase with your name on it. Again, why are we doing this? It's called marketing. Marketing, marketing, marketing. It's your name. It's your sassy, salty, savvy words. It's your sage advice. It's an aha going on. Now, when I work on, as when I have my book shepherd hat on, and I'm working with clients on their books, we're always going to be using call outs. We're always going to be working through that. And when we're working on a, a book that has a pull out or a call out in it, those are perfect posters. Many of them can just be copy pasted on that. You don't have to have them too long. But this is it, this, you know, I'm a huge believer that you should be blogging and you should be posting every day. Um, and, uh, on your social media, not once a week. And for once a month, you're invisible. Once a week, by the way, you're invisible with the exception of a blog. Now, your blog, you could put on Pinterest, which you should have a, a blog board, Pinterest and tied into it. Well, we did this, uh, uh, last month in November, we did a two part series on Pinterest the how-tos of using Pinterest and how to really enhance it and expand your uh, viewer base. So that's one thing. The second thing is that you would push out a blog, a new blog on any Facebook or, you know, you could do it, you know, if you have, if your Instagram's your thing, you could certainly do it with an image up there with a link over to your, uh, your website that they could read the blog. You would, if you're on Twitter or LinkedIn, that you should definitely be doing it not only once, twice, at least three times. New blog on, blah, 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 blah. And you have that and understand the power of the hashtag. And every uh, social media platform that I'm tuned into that an author should be using or is using is using hashtags. So you add on that because it so expands and brings in the possibility, not, there are no guarantees people, but the possibility of more viewers that might be following those specific hashtags that you could pick up on. So that's what you want to be looking for. I mean, that's kind of a hot thing that will bring it into play and be very, very good for you. So that's kind of exciting in that area. Um, and, and so move that along. The second thing is that when you start doing these posters, you'll push those out. Now, I have at least two posters that go out every day. One of them is kind of crazy where I am actually – uh, going in and I am, I have weird, the weird, bizarre holiday. So I have a poster for every day of the year. Um, what, whatever it celebrates, I never know what, uh, it could be potato chip day for all I know. It could be, you know, bury your zucchini day, but that I have a poster for that. So it's just keeping your visibility out there. And that's what's so critical. And that's what's so important to do that. So start creating posters. Start creating posters with your phrases, your insights, add images to them, put them in your regular repertoire. And for heaven's sakes, get some type of a social media manager that can help you so you don't spend hours a day pushing this out. I use Hootsuite. There's Egger. There's Buffer. There's all kinds of them that you can use uh, to do that. But that will help you in that area. Next up. Let's talk bookstores. Now, I have always sold most of my books um, uh, outside of bookstores. I have sold them in the areas of, um, uh, uh, really speaking, has been my number one uh, area that I have done promotion with and that kind of thing. But what you can do is start making friends. Now, we've developed a great rapport with Barnes & Noble. And in fact, 
later, uh, not later, we've already, you know, we, we've already got it set up, but we have two special events with, with Barnes and Noble stores in Colorado where they called us and asked me to bring in a bunch of authors that we would sell that they do it as a book fair. And it, it's a grand day. Everyone gets 90 minutes to two hours to promote and support themselves. So that's very cool. And we can bring that along. So I would say, you know, contact your bookstores. Now, I'll tell you for someone like the chains, Barnes and Noble's a chain, that they're going to insist that they pull your books from a distributor. That's why we insist that you make sure that you're up on on uh, Ingram Spark, so then they can pull it from Ingram and have it in that area. So that's all good, and we will bring that into play, and and you will be um, uh, take advantage of that. The other thing is, you go to the independents, look up locally, put in your zip code. If you go to indiebound.com, this is one way to do it. Indiebound.com which has a directory of all the independent bookstores, put in your own zip code. It will immediately tell you all the independent bookstores that are in your area. So check them out. Go say hello. Introduce yourself. Ask them if you could do an event. Now, when you do an event, it means you have to bring people. So you invite people. You get them. And by the way, have cookies or something because that's the way to get people to stop and and chit-chat with you. Um, and it's, I think it's also cool when you do it with another person because you can help cross. Number one, you can encourage each other, but you can cross promote each other and you could take that into effect. So check that out, schedule it and keep that. It's just, it's cross promoting all the time, but the bookstores can help you, but you need to make friends at Barnes and Noble. Call your local Barnes and Noble and ask who the CRM, Charlie Roger Mary, CRM, it stands for the Community Relations Manager. They're the ones that set up everything in the store, any type of activity, any type of event, and they will become your best friend. And they call us, which is also very, very cool for any time and events going on. All right, this is Judith Bryles. It's Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing. We have one more segment, and I'm going to talk about one of my favorite things that will guarantee to sell truckloads by the case of books. If that's up your alley, stay tuned. We'll be right back. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and guide to collaborate with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You do not need more problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Riles will shepherd you through the maze and chaos. At times, she has had to step in and rescue a book. A book that has been sabotaged by a publisher, by a publishing service provider, and sometimes even by the author. If you want author and book success, connect with her today at thebookshepherd.com. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years' experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. 
We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, welcome back to our final segment of the old year. Before we go into 2020, I couldn't leave without talking about speaking, which has been so successful for me. It's how I sold really a million books, a million copies of my books, which now number 37. And it's been, you know, some books certainly are more successful than others. You're not going to have a home run on every book. And some of them are meant to be more niche oriented. And I'm a big believer in learning how to write into a niche. Um, one of my sayings is, and I would encourage all of you, I've mentioned it, you know, over the years, but one of my favorite books is Snappy, Sassy, Salty, Wise Words for Authors and Writers that I created. It has 250 of my own personal quotes. And, and then two of them, um, have really been a mainstay, and I get all my new authors I work with to write them down. The first is, don't do well what you have no business doing. Look, there's a lot of bling that's going to come along and get your attention. A lot of bling. Should you do this and that? And the answer may be no. It could be possibly a big no. So don't do well what you have no business doing. Get concentrated. I mean, should you be working on marketing your book? Oh, yeah. But is this the right method of marketing? Maybe not. So don't do well what you have no business doing. Um, and the other one is if you never say no, your yeses become worthless. You really have to become myopic at times when it becomes uh, around you and your book on where you want to go. So understand that. Get snappy, sassy, salty. Treat yourself uh, uh, to it. Um, I love it. It's just it's a little book. It's worth the investment. And it's something that you just, you know, you read through and it's, it's in six kind of sections from getting more juice for, you know, writing from dealing with failure. You're going to run into it to um, moving success along to writing prompts, etc. All right. Speaking, speaking, speaking that uh, it, it is there are ways to success. Um, for it. There are people who want to hear you. I don't care what your topic is. There, There's an audience out there. You got to go find it. So that's where you will be looking at the Google um, and you'll be looking at groups that bring in speakers. Let's start there. Brooks, br- groups that bring in speakers that deal with overcoming adversity. Groups that bring in speakers who, who, who want motivational speakers. Groups who are looking for resolving conflict in their workplace or in relationships. Groups who want speakers who talk about family and balance. You, whatever your topic is, you start that as you probe down at Google search. But you want to start with groups who bring in speakers because a lot of times those groups are almost open for just about anything, just about anything. And that's where you want to work on your your sheets and having that. So one of the components is that if you haven't done it now, um, I know I've done a whole program on how do you create an author one sheet? How do you create a book one sheet? in the same program. And so you want to have images. You want to be able to know how to do the right kind of brag. A brag would be using some numericals, uh, uh, values into it. For example, I've worked with over 500 authors who have created over a thousand bestsellers. 
Uh, I've sold over a million books. I've spoken in uh, all 50 states. Each one of those would be the 50 for 50. One million would be one zero 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 zero. A thousand would be one zero zero zero. Do you want people? Well, uh, their eyeballs are more attracted to the number versus the word spelled out. So understand that. You want to have that kind of a statement that comes in that reinforces your expertise. Your name should be big, 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 big at the top. I would have your tagline, what your expertise is underneath it. And then this kind of opening brag who you are, what you're about. Could be if you're a fiction author, you're a master storyteller that tantalizes audiences with twists and turns, blah, blah, blah. Um, Then then you want to have, make sure that you have how to contact you, like with the phone number and um, email, and I include a street address. You want to have a few testimonials that could be from from uh, for speaking, because uh, I have a, a sheet for speaking that uh, it was from meeting planners who who said you rocked. Uh, then if you're you're doing for your expertise from testimonials from clients who say you rock what you did for them, that kind of thing. You could fill both sides. Um, I just have mine on one side, but I did have a graphic artist involved to help me out uh, to really did it. I wrote the content. I wrote the content, but I turned them loose on the design. And if, if there are specific colors that you want, for heaven's sakes, definitely say them. One sheets are essential. You need on your website a speaking tab. On that, on that tab, you're going to have pictures of you, you're going to have about you. You're going to have your topics with maybe some titles, a couple of lines, benefits that the audience have. You're going to have uh, an introduction in play. Um, I have a questionnaire that goes out to meeting planners, and I also have how I want rooms set up, if I can control it at all. So all those are available. Now, it used to be that we all did this by snail mail. And then when online came along, we had it all online. I'm going to make a suggestion that you consider having a combo and make it available for both. Because everything is online now, the snail mail, if you look fancy dancy, um, if it pops out. So this is where color comes into play. So here's a tip. If you're going to mail anything out with uh, mail, snail mail, um, get colored envelopes. Get them customized. Like everyone knows that I use the colors of, of plum purple and um, lime green and that. So those would be colors that I would have to pop out in that. And so we're good there. And then what I would do is um, uh, just, you know, go to town, have a good time. Think about, you know, little goodies that you could have that would leave you behind and do giveaways. Always give a book, book, a book away if you can. Um, maybe that's the way I, mean, I want to make sure before I leave, I give away a couple of my books. So, you know, pop your name, put put your business card as we pass around the basket. Or um, I've actually used little pouches when I travel. Some of these fabric pouches I can find that we put them in there, and then I have someone draw, and um, and the winner and the, the draw whoever helps me, my assistant gets the pouch, and the winner gets the book. So those are things that you could do to enhance what you do. But this is a way you sell a lot of books. So get my book, how to create a million dollar and that's a one comma o o o comma o o o speech in it there is a contract it goes into detail of why each of the sections and the lines are in the contract um, if you contact me after you get the book, I will send you the Word document of the contract so you can then make it and morph it to be your own. But you want to work on that and you want to understand the power of marketing, You put the power of doing the ask of someone that they will uh, ask you, um, uh, you, you ask, who do you know? Who brings in speakers that would enjoy my kind of topic? I always got referrals. I was always booked a year ahead on that. And and it, it's like with writing. The more you write, the better the writer you are. The more you speak, the better the speaker you are. And it's essential in speaking. Don't bombard people with a bunch of stats. 
and your statistics or, you know, horror things. And you need to understand if you have a topic that has, you know, some roller coasters to it, some negatives to it, uh, that it's, uh, speaking's like a roller coaster. If, if you're telling them a sad story, you got to bring them back up. So you've got to work on humor to have humor in it and mastering the art of storytelling. I usually start every speech with a story as I go along. So speaking is essential. So before I leave you and before we start the new year, I I wanted to go over some of the blunders that typically people uh, and authors get in trouble with. And the first sign is, I want you to make, uh, the thing is to make a sign. Besides my quotes, don't do well, which you have no business doing. And if you never say no, your yeses are worthless. Add this one on. Perfection is the enemy of the author. The only thing perfect in my my realm is the snowflake. And every one of them are different. So post it. Post a sign where you can see it. Perfection is a form of procrastination. It's going to get you into, into trouble. Know this, that opportunities that come your way, uh, the window can open very quickly and it can shut very quickly. So when you constantly edit, rewrite, redo, 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 you're into what I call the one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, three to get ready, oh, three to get ready show. You got to just go sometimes. So, and if someone approaches you with a contract, don't get, don't look at this as the, as the dangling bling carrot. It may not be a good contract. You really need to have someone look it over and forever who you get involved with, please do a Google search on them with their name, their company and put the words problems, scams, lawsuits, ripoffs, complaints behind their name and do a Google search into the second, third, fourth, fifth page. So you really look at, understand that book selling is highly competitive. You've got to figure out how you can stand and and rise above the crowd. So make sure that I mentioned earlier in the program, know who the bookstores are that will support you and help you when you can show up there. Don't poo-poo Amazon. You need it. It's important to you. And and don't forget about you. I want to make sure that you put in every book that you go forward, every revision you do, an about me, how to work with me, how to work with you, how to bring you to their group. Not just about the author, a second page. All right, so as we've summed up, it's been a fast hour. These ideas for you to work on to make a better year of of, you know, speaking, touching base with bookstores, going for book awards, understanding that um, posters are huge, huge in going forward and working on getting noticed with press releases and getting to know these weeklies. You've got a new formula for success that I'm going to guarantee you will work if you'll follow it. Happy New Year. This is Judith Bryles and your author, to Good, your guide to book publish. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each week,